Okay, so uh, thank you everyone for uh, for attending our little soiree this afternoon. Lord uh, Coxswain is making his way to the front. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> 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 uh, you'll be taken out by Lord Coxswain and Victoria. Yes. <laughs> so you get a double tap of the ray gun to the back of the head. Um, so welcome everyone um, to this uh, this experience. We're going to have a little um, a little chat, and then uh, hopefully you all get get a chance to um, to hang out and play the uh, play the game, or at least have a have a little taste of it. But um, so what I wanted to do, I'm uh, I'm Andy Lanning. I'm the executive creative director of Magic Leap, and. Um, and I wanted to introduce you to our illustrious, uh, illustrious uh, gang here on the stage. Um, we've got Bridget Taylor here, who's uh, co-founder and uh, creative director and chief muckety muck of, uh, of Weta Workshops. Hey, it's a nice. It doesn't like that. Most importantly, my wife and I run a little thing called Star Dog, which assists people on our workshop floor to create their own. Uh, creative worlds, if you like, and that's where uh, the world of Dr. Grawbords was born. It was obviously born in his head and through his paintbrush, but uh, it was Star Dog's uh, endeavours that enabled this world to come to life. So it's very nice being here, proudly representing that, as well as with Peter Workshop. Rich, Richard and Tanya are my patrons. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, I'm going to have a real trouble moderating this crew. Uh, that, that, was, that was question five gone. Thanks, Richard. Uh, <laughs> sitting next to uh, Richard is Greg Broadmoor. And Greg Broadmoor is, is the, uh, the granddaddy of, uh, of Dr. G. It's all sprung from his, uh, his noggin. Uh, and everything you are looking around at and everything you're going to see today is uh, cooked up in his fevered little brain. I programmed the whole entire game, yeah. did everything, did all the voices, did all the art. I'd like to thank you. If you see anyone wearing t-shirts like this, pretending that they made the game with me. <laughs> just minions. Yeah. Oh, as you know, as you, as, you can, as you can tell, he's incredibly <laughs> shy and bashful uh, and self-effacing, I find. Okay. And the general on the end there should really have no introduction, but uh, again, this is one of the... He just, yeah, he's <laughs> some dude. Uh, we, we, we took pity on him because he, he just looked a bit sad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we introduce the CEO and, uh, and founder uh, of Magic Leap, uh, Rony Abbeviz. Okay, so we're going to go to... Sorry about this, guys. I've got to, I've got to go for my running order, or else we'll... Uh, Okay. So Greg, yes. Why Greg? Why? <laughs> because. <laughs> awesome. Thank, Thank you, Greg. Oh, <laughs> that was much easier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a quiz at the end of this, everybody. Okay. So uh, now, Greg, um, the world of Doctor Um Basically, why Greg? Why? <laughs> yeah. Well, to me, it's it's very simple. It's just like actually just the history of science fiction. I think a lot of people ask me like, where the hell did it come from? It just came from history. I, like when I uh, when I was a little kid, before I ever saw Star Wars, which kind of crystallized science fiction for me, I grew up with Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers, the original Tarzan shows, King Kong, those original black and white serials, and ray guns specifically stuck in my mind. So I think we're working on King Kong, and in my my spare time, I would go home and I'd start painting these ray guns. And then the next question was like, well, who uses these ray guns? What for? And the whole Dr. G universe around just grew from that notion of what connects these things together. Start with an object and build the universe out around it. Uh, it's kind of back to front, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you've been used to working and developing worlds at Weta uh, for, for other properties and things yeah. like that. And so Richard, through Starbuck, uh, Starbuck, gave you the chance to develop your own world. Exactly, yeah. Like I said, I showed the ray guns one day to Richard, and actually Richard went up to me and said, well, we should just make those. We should make them as real. Make them as metal, make them in these collector cases, and bring them to life. We should give them to people. Yeah, for me it's been lovely because uh, although I have a very enjoyable career doing what I do, service providing to films and television shows and other creative opportunities, uh, it was actually the opportunity to curate the world of Dr. Rawboards for Greg that became really enthralling to me. And 
although we aspire to work, create a movie and we aspire to do other things with the world, there was actually uh, uh, the opportunity to curate an exhibition around objects. What you see on the walls is about uh, one hundredth of the total collection of Dr. Grawboards. Uh, at its most significant, it numbers over 200 paintings and over a hundred artifacts including uh, aliens, uh, ray guns, uh, unique uh, specimens from foreign planets. Yes, sculptures, bronzes, uh, life-size creations, hyper-realistic silicon replicas of Coxwain and the moon mistress, and on and on it goes. And uh, we've been able to fill whole uh, exhibition halls with it around the world. And that has been wildly enjoyable to me because it has uh, allowed me to uh, work with Greg to realise his art into a living, breathing uh, uh, cultural phenomenon, in my view, if you like. So, Rogi, when, when um, and a lot of people know this, but the relationship between you and Weta actually predates Magic League uh, in, in, in many, many ways, and uh, um, you were working with Richard and the team to develop your own story world and so what it was what was it about this story world that, that, that captured your imagination? Killing robots. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually met uh, Richard because I, I built real robots to help people in surgery and then um, I got a message back from Richard or Rick at some point from Weta that said a, a friend of robots is a friend of Weta. Yeah. So it was great. Invited me down to New Zealand, and I uh, went down to work on a project, and met Greg, and he had his own kind of upstairs cave in the workshop. It was like there were people on the floor, and you had to, you weren't allowed up the stairs. There was this Greg person. I remember this. Maybe it's not completely accurate. I think it is. On the second floor, you weren't allowed up to where Greg was. I'm like, what's 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 a Greg? What's happening there? Um, but then all these marvelous ray guns and creations that were going on. I think at some point uh, we were Richard Greg and I were talking like, would it be cool if these things worked? Yeah. Um, you know, just the idea of a ray gun work would be freaking awesome because it's like a prop from a movie looks so great. We see them work in the movies, but they don't really work in the real world. And it's something that you never you don't get that last mile. We're like, can we do that? So we set off on this kind of crazy journey. Yeah, for, for, yeah, for me, like, um, like I said, like. When I when you see the lightsaber, right, the first thing is, why can't I use that? And the Reagan is just the extension of that. Uh, here, especially the very early versions of that stuff, it's just so exotic and strange. I really wanted to give people the chance to bring that to life. And the, the technology you, you invented has allowed that kind of opportunity to happen. And also in a way that's actually non-destructive. Like, it looks like you're sitting fire to your couch, but you're not actually sitting fire <laughs> to your couch. Or accidentally shooting the legs off your cat. So that's actually a much better version of a Reagan in my estimation. <laughs> I was going to say, the other thing is that what a workshop are they're sculptors. So everything is physical and has scale and presence. And like if you see the probot back there, a little yellow, like yellow little flying thing, it's, it's got all this visceral heft and weight and size to it. And, and I was thinking, people that know how to do that would understand the idea of sculpting software in the world. They weren't coming off of like flat stuff in phone world. They know how to do this, and like, let's just do that. But they really run around in the real world, and because they were Weta, they sort of understood what I was talking about. Thank God. And what what clicked for me, uh, Rodi had been talking to me about his desire to see uh, a technology exist beyond the screen. For the last hundred plus years, every piece of technology that we consume uh, entertainment on is screen-based technology, and whether it's advanced into VR. AR, whether it is cinema screens or uh, or flat screen televisions, it's still screen technology. And uh, Roni uh, had a moment on uh, on the Our Blue project that we were developing for, where he said to me one day, "Do you know? I actually think that for me to realise this world, we have to step beyond the screen." And uh, I couldn't quite wrap my head around what he was explaining to me until he asked me to travel down to Florida for the first time. Greg had actually gone down before me. I couldn't travel because we were on. I went on a recce to make sure he wasn't <laughs> mad. <laughs> it was safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we confirmed he was mad. And, uh, the and, right type of mad. Yeah, and Greg came home and he was 
bubbling away and Roni phoned me up and said, you've got to come down. And so I managed to take three days off from the project we are doing. I flew down, I put my head inside this massive contraption. I didn't really get it. Uh, I was looking at a Maltese cross hanging out in the distance. And he said to me, leaned in, and he said, just be aware that you're the 11th person in the history of humanity, uh, of humankind, in the history of humankind, to see an object in a light field. And uh, the penny dropped for me, because what I realized is this wasn't just a, a digital augmentation on a screen. This was our opportunity to augment a world that still is tactile. It's still a practical, physical, beautiful world, like these demo rooms around us. This is introducing a augmented, beautiful, crafted imagery into our own world. And uh, for me, who comes from a practical manufacturing background, that just lit up my brain. And the last eight years now have been uh, thinking about that and intensely for the last five and a half years. And it really does start to fill your creative dreams, what this actually means for what you can create in this technology. For me, the, the chance to actually take the world building, the prop building, the, the love that we try and put into all of our creations. We, we really care about the armor, the weapons, the, um, the costumes, the sets, and try and make them feel like they lived in and like they had a history and a culture. We took all that, the thought, and invested that into the props and the things that we made for the, the Dr. Robots Invaders. If you look down at every ray gun, you'll see the way it was polished. You'll see the use of the person that uh, had it before you. If you look at Gimbal's head, you actually see that it's it's slightly dirty between the brass and the enamel paint, where you can't quite rub away uh, and polish it exactly. Uh, we wanted to bring that kind of life and detail that, you, every, with, that every object should have. It's kind of that's like the, the, the prime directive of Weta Workshop is to create these totally believable story worlds and bring objects that are refined and designed from those worlds into the real world. If you look around here now, there's, there's jars up there with creatures in them, and they're little tags on them. Like yeah, every tags. one of them has a little backstory. Yeah. I wrote uh, what the scientists did and uh, what unfortunately happened to them after they <laughs> decided to taste it. <laughs> and and they are all got their own Latin names because, of course, any specimen in the Royal Academy of Sciences would have a Latin name. So Greg invented Latin names. <laughs> And, and when the guys started making the ray guns and you were putting them into uh, presentation cases, that if you own, I think there's some around here as well, where you look at them, it, inside it's all distressed and aged and the guns have all got a little bit of uh, rust on them. So they really look like a genuine antique from some bizarre alternative. We literally did discuss putting moths into them and the lids here, so that when you opened it up, like, oh, that is actually old. That's our new stretch goal, isn't it, though, is to do, is to do that. If you're, yeah. wearing, if you're wearing the glasses and you open one of these, moths will come out. <laughs> that's, an, that's an advanced feature that's coming later. <laughs> so, Richard, Richard to, to, to that, that richness of detail and attention that goes into, into Wetter's, like I say, your prime directive is, um, you know, the opportunity, like you say, to bring that to something that's never been created before, a brand, a brand new standard for you. Yeah, this, this is a a totally new medium as I think about it, you know, it, uh, as everyone in the room can appreciate at some level, this is a medium in its infancy. We are, we are the lucky ones that are getting to uh, explore this medium, maybe at the same level that uh, George Mellet might have put the rocket in the eye of the moon, uh, X number of, what, 90, 100 years ago. And screen technology has climbed on the shoulders of the technology that came before it. We're five years into this technology, or into the inception of this technology, where it's going to go, and what it will be in a year, two years, five years, 20 years, is mind-boggling to me, because uh, I love thinking and dreaming and exploring what can be uh, from this, and then discussing it with my friends, uh, my colleagues, specifically these three people. There's nothing better than a dinner shared with these three where we just go into a wild reverie of uh, thought and creative uh, inspiration around where we're going to try and take this stuff. But of course, now that the technology is out in the world, and we're starting to see the very first seeds of creativity coming from other developers it's becoming evident what's so unique and possible 
from all of us. So, so to that as well, so for only for you, you're, you're very adamant about the um, Magic Leap being a creator edition and the focus being on, you know, on creators and creative vision uh, to, to, to drive this forward with the technology. Um, you know, can you speak to, to that, please? Yeah, I mean, right now we're in the mode where we want creative people to be building and learning this new medium. Um, part, part of what you'll see today, I don't know who's seen demos yet and when you get to play with it, but this is a great expression of our philosophy because what you have is you have Greg's, the inside of Greg's brain, if you look inside, it's got a lot of <laughs> interesting stuff happening. <laughs> well, first of all, you have to have some imagination. It has to be a creative world in there. So there's, you kind of extract it out like from a Harry Potter thing. I probably shouldn't have said that. But, <laughs> but then, you know, it can manifest as a comic book, as a painting, as a sculpture. Um, it manifests here as like a production design of like, what is the environment of a Dr. Gordon world? And then when you add um, our component, you see real people, you see that alien sculpture, you see paintings of this world that exists in Greg's mind. Now it exists here for all of you to actually stand inside. You're like inside Greg's mind right now, which is really wild. <laughs> and then what, the, what our system does, it opens up. Am I inside my mind? <laughs> <laughs> no. Dude, <laughs> he's out of his mind. That's like a, we're in a universe inside a universe, man. I think I was going in that direction.